<coughs> hello, hello, I'm just talking, I'm just talking. That's you, pal. Oh, right. Uh, where's the cracker opener? <laughs> Shall we uh, kick it off? Mm. Please do. Right, Harry Johns of Holy Mountain. People may know you from Dinosaur Pileup. Or well, Brawlers. I think only old people. <laughs> <laughs> I think only um, old people know me from Dinosaur Pileup. Early doors as well, but yeah, Brawlers was probably the main thing. From Brawlers uh, into the Holy Mountain Empire. Mm -hmm. uh, from Holy Mountain into Holy Ramen. Mm -hmm. From Holy Ramen, we had a little bit of a uh, segue of COVID mm -hmm. catastrophe, uh, which saw, I guess, a whole range of craziness that you've been rocking. Uh, the bagel side, the burger side, the chicken wing collections, uh, the secret forest cookout side of things. Harry Johns, what the fuck? You are the consummate grafter, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Right. I'm, so, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely excited to be here. <laughs> I am, I honestly am. Yeah, yeah. So, where the hell does it all come from, food wise? Because obviously it was the band stuff, there was a mild uh, time in the bar scene, but then suddenly you are the food guy. I'm the food guy. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> that's a good question. So, I remember the day that. Uh, me and the guys from Brawlers had a meeting about not being a band anymore and it was in Milo the bar that I was running post uh, post uh, what's the word you know like we we changed Milo around oh, and yeah, we did yeah, a big yeah, reefer yeah, yeah. Um, what was it called then it was at some, it turned into that spot that like you didn't know what it was called because it didn't have a sign out front it did, yeah. It got. It, it was mysterious. The neighborhood. It was called the neighbor. Was it the neighborhood bar? Something well, like I think. I, I wonder if maybe I, it could have still maybe been been Milo. To be honest, even okay. though we we did literally take the sign down. <laughs> maybe we should have not done that. Um, but I, yeah, I do remember. Um, we we sat around and we talked about not not doing brawlers anymore in Milo, which was the bar that I was running. Um, and I, I think within seven days of that happening, my my grandma, who, for all intents and purposes, sort of raised me, um, got really ill, and and I thought, okay, right, well, this might be a good opportunity to maybe move to Liverpool, which is where I'm from and where she was living. I'm really picking up that Scouse accent. Oh yeah, <laughs> Scouse like is a I'm, Yeah, I'm as Scouse as they come, basically. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, Aintree through and through. Um, <laughs> so I thought, okay, right, well, she's really important to me. I'll go move back to Liverpool. Brawlers wasn't happening. Milo was on, was sort of fizzling out, so yeah, to speak. Yeah. And I thought, okay, cool. So um, I rang my mate Luis, Luis Michelle, and I said, hey, I, he, I knew that he was a chef in Liverpool, and I said, please, can you help me? maybe find a, a a job and he said yep sure of course and then 24 hours later I was like right okay so there's all these bars looking for bar managers blah 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 but he said but you ha I've noticed that you've become more and more in tune with cooking and he, and he is a an unbelievable chef he, he's a you know he's got like his own fucking Wikipedia page okay like, are we are we are okay to swear fuck yeah yeah, yeah. Right, so Patrick. he's a he's a bit right. So I'm going to do both <laughs> of those things, and and he and he's opened up a series of Mexican restaurants in London in the late '90s, early 2000s that were incredibly successful, and, and it's just circumstantial that he's a, name a really good friend of mine, Luis Michel. He opened like, well, now it's not it's escaping me now, but he opened a few great Mexican. Okay, he was sort of like part of this like late 90s early 2000s wave of like mexican restaurants being cool again. is that where they all came from they all, <laughs> el camino is the most famous one so okay. if you look up el camino it's a a great mexican boozer in in london and uh he was in liverpool and he said look why don't you just lucha libre lucha yeah absolutely right so you know Call so you, the you're doing the you're doing the reese that's what we got the producer for. I love that. Is that what you want? I to love use? that. No, that's what's needed. Coley on a producer tip. Love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. So anyway, he said, you've been... At this point, I'd, I'd started doing Taco Tuesdays on my own just out of the love of it. Uh, I, I, when out I was, of Milo's? Or? Out of Milo's, sorry, okay. out of Milo's, yeah. And ever since I've, I'd spent some time in Mexico touring, I'd really fallen in love with the food and it, it really had an impact on me. And um, he said, why don't I just get you a job learning to be a chef? Now, there was sort of like 50% of me was like, I'm 29. And there's that sort of... I, I now realise yeah, yeah, total yeah. bullshit. Yes. But you have that like, oh, am I, is it too late to change yeah. direction? But total bullshit. Yeah. I, I now became, know. I became a barman at 40. So far, right. Yeah. I mean, it's fucking Went from bullshit. the office world to that shit, yeah. You should just do what's in your heart without exactly. sounding completely cheesy. Um, so, I, okay, cool. Anyway, fast forward. I moved to Liverpool to look after my grandma. And I was working in a in a... A, a two rosette restaurant in the Wirral and um, I'd gone from being the front man of a band that maybe 3,000 people ever had heard of but that was enough for me to think that I was you the, got they had the some fucking shit. traction though Brawlers we did there. some stuff we, yeah, yeah, I, mean, yeah. I mean I'm not I'm not negating any know, of the yeah. of the things that we achieved. I've been in some small ass bands, and you weren't in a small. We ass were band. in a sort of medium band, and yeah, um, yeah, yeah, that's cool. And I'd gone, <laughs> so I'd gone from like, I know I'm the best thing ever, <laughs> yeah, because I've commandeered four thousand people a night for a week or whatever, like okay. thinking I'm the big shit, and uh, and anyway, and then I walked into this this kitchen. And had a had chef just call me a fucking cunt for six months. Literally nothing I could have done. I mean, like a fall, a fall from grace. And I, and you know what, dude? At the time, I was like, "Fuck, just even fucking." I've been, I've done this. I've been here. You don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> You're like because I'm a prick. Yeah. Like, Fuck you. Yeah, you don't know anything. And then after the six months, I was just like, okay, I get it now because I am fuck all and like I have so much to learn. And yeah, and thankfully I was passionate about the craft. So I stuck with it. Six months later, I'm a rosette. French, but thank you so much. Have a taste for that. There you go, Colin. What's this? Uh, this is Strawberry Stars from Vault City. It is the third birthday, or third birthday beer. Yeah, sorry, it's weird phrasing, but yeah. Third birthday beer, so they're one of their beer, uh, beers, Strawberry Skies, they've kind of zhuzhed it up. They've put gold flakes in it. It smells amazing. It, it smells m- fucking great. Oh, well, that's just pop. Mm. Well, you know, my, 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 I know my issue well. with some of these beers, mm. as I know you know, Steve, yes. is that they say that they're a fermented green mushroom and tarragon. <laughs> Saison or whatever that Which any of those is. Which we get into shortly with the natty wine. Well, it never fucking tastes of the things that it yes. says. Yeah, yeah. But this just tastes like strawberry ice cream. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like completely happy about it. The, it there's a real tang to it that yeah. like you don't strawberry get in a lot of the sours. That's but, great. Yeah. And, I, and I, again, I know you know this. I'm not into this world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Normally, these sort of beers get me. Drunk quickly. Well, it's and a nine, sleepy drunk. It's a nine point five percenter, but there's just it's a little. Oh, as long as it's only nine point five. It's a little wet. <laughs> yeah, that's all. It's only as it's, long as it's just wetting one's it's, whistle. It's, it's sub ten percent. You, you're not you're not ducking into the double figures there. <laughs> Se- yeah, no, season no double... six of this podcast will be people drinking nine hundred and twelve percent. Basically, just going blind. That's, if you if you can see by the end of the show, go fuck just yourself. Mainlining sixty six percent. Fucking dark dub dippers or whatever. There sure. was that What's the Move episode where you were drinking some questionably strong rubbing, oh, was there? rubbing spirits. Oh yeah, so we went to my friend's uh, dis- was, dis- just distillery. Yeah, yeah, just just not far from here at all. Hmm. And he was um, my friend Sam. Was it gin? Well, I think that the rhetoric was that it was everything. Okay. And. Uh, and it was, it was, yeah, that was wild because we were, I, I, I don't know anything about booze. I, I'm sort of mediumly good at drinking it, but I don't know anything about how it's made and I yeah. don't totally know. Same. Right. And I'm just sort of an open book. So, and we went to, we went to Sam's distillery in his house. 
And I remember, yeah, I'm, he was. The, there was a point where he was like, "This is the bit of the booze before it tastes like alcohol." Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Because I'm <laughs> a wank again. I'm a wank. I'm like yeah, braggadocious. That's literally in nature. Anyone that we know is going to be doing. Oh, it. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm, I'm a smash that shit. And it was yeah, literally yeah, yeah. like, yeah, I, it's a, it's the same as m- maybe me just running as fast as I can into a wall. <laughs> Nice. That yeah. sounds like the, it was, yeah, it was gnarly. Experience. It was but gnarly. Anyway, no, so but I, t- we're back to to finish that story. Yeah, I moved to Liverpool. I looked after my grandma. I learned how to be a chef. Okay. And I remember that I was getting the the train back to back to my house after a shift in Liverpool, and I got a message. Uh, I got a phone call. Sorry from Cy Ord, who famously owns Smokestack. Oh, okay. In Leeds, and and and, and what, is he one of the owners? Then, or is what? Sorry, does he like own the building or something? So he is Smokestack. He also owns Ilkley Brewery. He also owns okay. like he's a guy in, around Leeds who owns some stuff, right? <laughs> and he's he's been around for a long time. He's a good guy. And then he said, "Look, I'm opening a Mexican restaurant, but we don't have a chef. Do you want to work for me?" And I was like, "Let me just." get back to you in five minutes and I, I, I distinctly remember putting the phone down I was in the train station in Bootle and I remember ringing him back up and being like how about instead of you pay me to be your chef how about I pay you to rent the kitchen and I can do my own menu okay and it wasn't a financially uh, it was it the idea wasn't because I thought I would be better off for it. I just thought I've just spent six months getting my ass kicked in this amazing restaurant. Like, I guess I just thought maybe I could put my own. Okay. I could put these things that I've learned. That's ballsy. I mean, I, I no, rarely it, no, 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 I am, but, but maybe it, in that if, instance I was. If it was yeah. me, there's no way that I'd have stepped out from my first kitchen foray into like what would be another city, and then. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I I know I, what you're I, saying. I, I would, me personally, I would go the safety route. Um, I think, yeah, it's, it's I mean, it, and it, it's indicative of what you've done since. The very, like, just, I want to do this and make this happen. Um, I but, think that... But carry on, yeah, no. I think that whether it's music or food, which are my two main passions, I feel like, for better or worse, there's something in me that is like... You didn't work this hard to just listen to someone else. Okay. And and that's really easily misinterpreted as like there's an arrogance being that people prick. could pick up on. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I'm not saying it's I'm the, the best fucking chef. It's the difference between arrogance and seeing an opportunity that you know you can actually right, flourish. Right. Exactly. In. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. and for me, especially with with regards to this opportunity that I was being given sort of I thought, well, okay. There aren't any good Mexican restaurants in, in, in Leeds. This is at the time. This is pre Lupe's. This is pre Neon Cactus getting its shit together. I'm like, okay, maybe I can actually do something here because I am an experienced French Mediterranean chef, Rosette Standard, who's who circumstantially my best friend uh, is a Mexican bloke. And the third aspect of this trifecta is that I've spent some time in Mexico because of music I've been so lucky to, to travel all over the world because of music with music and I've so there's this like I know I love Mexican food because I've been there my best friend is Mexican chef and I've just finished six months of getting my ass kicked <laughs> you know being taught the rudimentary all encompassing French ways right really which is the like yeah, the yeah. nucleus of all cooking um so I was like, well, I, th- I kind of just thought, I think I could probably write a better menu than whatever you're going to tell me to cook. To be honest as well. Like, just being blunt. Yeah, and it almost feels like going into what you would have been going into would have been a very, it, it sounds condescending to say a step down, but it... It would have it, felt it, a bit like, it, yeah, come on, like I know more about I'm used food, to, it, you? like you'd be pissed off that they wouldn't be kicking your ass. Right. There'd be no ass kicking involved. There'd be no... Yeah, it's... Yeah, yeah, I get you. Absolutely. Absolutely, you put it better than I could have done. So, yeah, that. And so, I just was like, okay, cool. Like, let's do six months. 
And that was the beginning. Okay. So, I mean, I guess Taco Tuesday is carried over, though, isn't it? <laughs> it was right there at the beginning, and then it was just this thing that was... Now it's a thing, yeah. There's yeah. been a lot of... It feels like there have been these recurring... Um, whatever it'll be, just things, brackets of... Like, the sort of the Wings Wednesday that you coined, and um, that you'll just kind of come back to occasionally and just re reintroduce into the fold for like whatever you're doing at that time yeah that's interesting you just that's, that's, yeah that's interesting you should say that because for me um i'm just always worried that things are gonna get stagnant and things are gonna get boring and things are gonna get predictable and uh you know in no way shape or form did i Invent Wings Wednesday or Taco Tuesday? Of no, course no, no, not. No. But, but to the, my the knowledge, that that these the things you. weren't going on. You know, when I decided to introduce them, um, and I can already hear a few people rolling their eyes at that statement. But I, I, it oh, is, yeah. No, but you know, it, it is, is true. Right. No, but it's like, how many bars across the world are doing a Whiskey Wednesday? But if you're in Leeds and you say Whiskey Wednesday... You fucking know it's Santiago. Basically. You so, know it's Santiago. And if I say, you know, there's a, if, if last summer we were talking Wings Wednesday, no one's saying anything other you than know, Holy Mountain. You know. It's like it's Harry. Exactly. exactly. So exactly. yeah, Taco Tuesday. And it's not it's, like one feels no, like no, no, one is owed anything from that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, it's really cool to see now how many people are doing tacos because, dude, completely for real, me doing tacos came more from me just wanting to be living in a city that provided them okay than it did trying to rip off something do you yeah. know what I mean it's like the, I love them and I've I've been in Mexico I've cooked in Mexico right. blah, blah, blah. just quickly of course I'm gonna put a pin in this whole story just to kind of segue into mm. have you felt any of the it's a bullshit conversation, but... Uh, They're the best ones. I know, but cultural appropriation, there I said it, but... Middle class... Well, I'm, I'm, Do I'm, I feel that way? You sound like a middle class white guy. You, I d absolutely am. You absolutely yeah, am, yeah, me too. Yeah. We are. That's why I can smell my yeah, own. Linkage you through and through. South Wales, here we go. Nice. Um, but yeah, so I mean... <laughs> What the fuck are you doing with Mexican cuisine? And then you're segueing into, like, uh, the Oriental cuisine, and what... Was it a case of, like... Why the fuck would I not do this? Because I, 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 to be honest, I can't think of a reason why a white guy wouldn't do fusion in any respect. It's like, it's food. It's all food. If you've got awareness of it and you want to bring it to the public, you know, dive the fuck in, get in the mix. It's all good. But there are conversations out there that say if you're kind of going that route and using these nationalities, then there is potentially a level of exploitation. As I say, I've never personally felt it. Did you, going into these ventures, the Mexican side and the uh, the ramen side, was that any level of awareness that you had? And second to that, like, did you actually get any kickbacks? I, I didn't see any. I, I've literally not seen any of that level of kickback in the UK, I don't think, uh, with regards to cuisine. My understanding is that we, as... British people get maybe a pass out of sorts. My understanding is that in America this is a bigger deal, but okay. um, I think the problem is using culture to make money. And yes. and I had a conversation with someone who I had a conversation with someone recently who said, "Hey." Um, my friend saw the Holy Ramen logo that's online and still is. And it says Holy Ramen. And in the background is a, an old Sammo Hung RIP recently, uh, Kung Fu movie behind. And, and that this person, and his job is to interact with people from all cultures around the world all the time. And he said that this one person had said, because he'd helped me with this logo, um, that he took offense that Holy Ramen, the logo was, the, the image behind the logo was this old Sammo Hung Kung Fu movie. And that it, it um, totally fairly, l let me finish just I one second. It, I get it, yeah. Totally fairly, he sort of saw it as in 
I don't know how to describe it, but you know that sort of like cosplay. I don't know what that is. Oh, uh, you're sort of just dressing up to be a thing, right? And it's yeah. sort of like it's like we're doing ramen. So Mr. We're, and we're Mrs. Gonna, Smith we're gonna from gra- Burley. We're, we're gonna grab like a, a right, and we're yeah, gonna do this, this and we're gonna do, uh, but, and we're gonna do a font, yeah. and we're gonna do a thing, and we're oh, gonna do a Jesus, and, yeah. and all we're trying to do is we're trying to essentially, I hate this word, but we're gonna try to dupe white. English people into thinking that there is a authenticness to what we're doing by appropriating a look and a and a wording and a uh, typography even um, shot absolutely the problem is and I am going to go back to my original point but <laughs> but but one should feel confident enough in what one cooks regardless of the origins of yes. that food yes so what's happening there is you know john smith from burley has opened a chinese restaurant and what he wants to do is make money and in order to do so he uses that chinese sorry for saying it typography to make people customers think that there is an authenticism authenticness to what they're doing but for me which is why i can sleep well at night i fucking will go toe to toe with anyone in leeds with their kung fu film knowledge it 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 has nothing to do with anything i like when i opened holy ramen i was like okay right what do i love i love cooking this food i really love hip-hop and i really love kung fu movies the fact that Kung kung fu movies and ramen in such a general completely stupid way ever so slightly we're talking yeah. about asia it's yeah. like the yeah. fucking biggest cut. <laughs> <laughs> like do you know what i mean like it, it, it's circumstantial that i love kung fu movies yes and that ramen is from exactly essentially yeah, from yeah, japan yeah. But it just, but it actually but all of the best kung fu movies are made in China. It's one of those things where, but, like, so it's two different countries. Yeah, you so could go fuck yourself. You basically. could get like ten people that would set up a ramen business, and they may well all go for the same aesthetic. But like, the intent, the the actual individuals within the business, if they actually have a connection to that, if like, if you walked up to the business and said, "What's that poster behind you?" Oh, that film is fucking banging. If you love kung fu, you got to check this out. Is yeah, there, right. Other films, this, that, and the other. It's like any aspect of the, the aesthetic of the, the business you can actually connect to. You've actually got a genuine, authentic connection to it. It isn't just like an aesthetic you've pinned up there because, oh, it's, it's this It cuisine. reminds people of. Right. Exactly. exactly, yeah. you, exactly. You've actually got that genuine connection to it. So it's, yeah, I, I entirely get how somebody seeing that poster there could trigger something, but sure. it, what it should trigger authentically would be the conversation that says that poster doesn't feel right for me and then you step up and you kind of actually have the human moment where they kind of interact with you and you interact with them there's an explanation of sorts exactly yeah yeah rather than it just being a one-sided like non-human just judgment of i see this i assume this this is correct it's no it's i see this i'm assuming this i'm going to ask them the question oh it turns out they actually are authentically into this thing it's like it's a you know, it's seeing the the kid with the uh, the Rolling Stones T-shirt. It's all oh, name name three songs. Then you know, it's all that bullshit that we. Yeah. It's just yeah. meme tastic now, but just it's, being a prick. Just being a prick. I mean, what Charlie I will wants. say is this: is that um, Holy Ramen was open for a year, and I got, I think, and I, I again, I don't. Want, this is not a braggadocious statement, but <laughs> but I think I got between one and three compliments from. Japanese and Chinese people who'd come to eat ramen in a city that they felt like didn't totally represent what what, what their taste was. Yeah. That were great. So that's between one and three a week for the year. So that's what, like somewhere between 50 and 150 compliments a year. And one fucking white idiot blogger. So they actually put the spotlight on you. Yeah, okay. I mean, I, I, no, uh, yeah, I, yeah, 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 yeah. But I, I, ironically, it was after after we closed. Oh, okay. And also, <laughs> forgive me for just sort of. I, I'm not changing. I, I promise, I'm not changing the subject. The problem really is, is that like, at what point do you? 
Um, at what point do you take all of that stuff that we're talking about, all of this sort of cultural appropriation, all of this sort of like, all of the background of what we're talking about, at what point do you put that to one side? I'm not saying put it in the bin, I'm not saying no, elevate yeah. it, I'm just yeah. saying put it to one side. And you say, here is a chap who is just trying to make a living. He's, I, I, I'm not McDonald's, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm not yeah. funded secretly by yeah, yeah. millionaires. I'm just a chap who has two mates and we're just trying to make a living. So yeah. there has to be a point where, you know, uh, virtue signaling. Ah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, Especially for me, the is the is problem. fucking closed. Oh, dude. What are you fucking doing if it's like just flying the flag on some shit after, after the event? Dumb. Yeah. Virtue signaling, for me, is in in this country, is more of a problem than than appropriation it's yes. sort of yes 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 it, it's sort of saying right okay so right okay let me have a little think what am i angry about to, right oh that fucking guy's got more instagram followers than me <laughs> what's he doing that i don't like oh uh, i did a an event over lockdown and it was called the chinese takeaway from hell <laughs> and m my idea was that like, I'm gonna do a Chinese takeaway, but I'm gonna put my own spin on it because I hope, and I'm gonna keep trying for the rest of my life to sort of uh, create this like, um, I want people to be like, oh, that's that's really Holy Mountain-y. Do you know what I mean? Like I yes. wanna put my own yeah, stamp yeah. on stuff. Um, so it was like Chinese food, but like instead of hoisting, hoisting chicken, it was hoisting venison, maybe, you know, and I like trying to just like switch it up in my own way. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not trying to fucking appease anyone. I'm just doing my own thing. I'm cooking food how I want to cook it. Um, and it was called the Chinese takeaway from hell. And we did one and it sold out and it was great. It was really, really popular. And it was a, a real good time. And then I, on the back of the first one being so popular, did this Chinese takeaway from, from hell too. And oh my god i added korean barbecue chicken now what i'm gonna say uh, 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 as seventy-six thousand listeners you just you just gasped. said some shit and i was just like where's the controversy well it's time to drop knowledge like how many fucking chinese takeaways have you been to that sell omelets and chips because they need to and they understand their demographic and they understand business yes. and like you can't just do fucking chicken feet and tendons like <laughs> there has to be a point where you all you, again you do those you goes, do them yeah 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 but just it goes do some back chips to as well culture is your operating system certain different different places have different ways and yeah i would say the chinese 90 ways... of all chinese takeaways in this country do omelette which is a French thing, but is then in, 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 in turn a European thing. I mean that, into, I know literally we're not part of, part of Europe, but you know, in, 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 yeah. culinarily, yeah, Europe, yeah, yeah. culinarily speaking, England is part of Europe in, in terms of regionality, the his, yeah. regionality and historically how one cooks and how the way one cooks comparatively to other continents. So. It gets a little complicated, but not that complicated. All I'm saying is, so fucking John Smith and his grandma from fucking Shanghai can open a Chinese takeaway and do omelets and chips, as well as all the beautiful regional cuisine that that's in their family. But I can't just like do a Korean chicken, and but it's under the moniker of a Chinese. T Fuck off. Yeah, yeah. Like it, the, there has to be a point where. You draw a line and just yes. say it's a guy who's passionate about the cuisine, and is f I'm like a good fucking chef, dude. Like let's draw I a line through that, then. Yeah, sorry. And let's, sure. <laughs> and let's bring it into right. So we did the holy mountain. Mm -hmm. You segued into the ramen world, and then, as I say, COVID landed, and mm. basically, what the fuck happened from there? Oh, it was one of those. It was as as cut and dry as like if you own a burger company then you can put a, you can cook a burger and put it in a box and send it to someone in Beeston that's great but like if you make ramen and put it in a box and send it to Beeston by the time that they get it it's gonna be a fucking nightmare it's gonna look something out of a John Carpenter movie <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it just didn't work it just okay. didn't work and there wasn't a lot of support there 
that's a whole other conversation. So it just it it just it had to, yeah, it just had to finish. But then COVID and everything happened for you. There was just a world of different just ideas that were constantly firing from you, essentially running your business from your Instagram uh, account. Yeah, and dropping right. This is going to be this is going to be this this week's concept or this month's concept. So as I said, it was the Wings Wednesday. It was you're running. Uh, was it a collection from the city centre? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I guess that's just not having to deal with the hassle of takeaway and just keeping it. I fucking loved it for the sake of just how DIY it was. It was, you know, we're... we're well, that's the re- that reason why we know each other. Is exactly. Because it's the we di- come from that the, DIY... The DIY punk shit is nature. just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, just... It's one of those things where if you've come from that world, it feels like that will always be a part of everything how you, you do. How you conduct yeah. yourself. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just, it will always find its way into whatever you do, however, kind of, quote, marks big you get. But... It entirely smacked of the DIY approach of just putting it out there. I'm cooking a bunch of wings. If you want to come and collect it, bang me an order. And that basically was, that feels like it was the thesis for your past kind of... Everything. 18 months? Everything. Everything prior, but it really seemed to coalesce with the the COVID. And it was, I mean, as I said at the beginning, you... I'm, I'm not just blowing smoke with just talking on you as like the grafter that seeing how you operated over lockdown it spoke to who you were as a person but it was you know I, i'm not giving up i'm not gonna stop doing this thing i'm gonna try that then i'm gonna try that then i'm gonna try that but it all to the end of the day is all about bringing money in so i can keep on doing what i'm doing yeah dude when i had holy ramen i i gave all of my best mates jobs and we set up shop and I made more money than I've ever made in my life. And we ate out all the time and we drank and we snorted drugs all <laughs> of the time. And we were the kind of like little rascals of the Assembly Underground, which is the complex in which we were part of. Yeah. yeah. And it was fucking great. I did acid for the first time in that basement. <laughs> we did all this great stuff. And and uh, and it afforded me this lifestyle that I, I really started to get used to. Um, and then when everything went to shit, it was like the moment where I'd moved from being the front man of a band that was semi-successful to being the bottom of the ladder in this kitchen in, in, in Liverpool. It was a real, like, fuck you. Who cares what you've done before? You're a piece of shit, bottom of the ladder, learn. Right? So like when COVID came along and 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 Holy Ramen had to close, and 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 what one has to sort of like bear in mind is that like I've watched countless other takeaways uh, use Uber Eats or whatever it is, and 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 these platform pla- sorry platforms, and and they were everyone was doing great, and 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 because. I'm a dick like there was a resentment there like I'm like (laughs) mother like I wish genuinely like I wish the ramen takeaway took off and I wish that we had a million uh, people on Uber Eats ordering our food right so you take that into consideration and when I was in my old flat in town and I think I had 26 pounds in my bank account or something and I was like I genuinely have no idea how to do anything but you've got the followers no I didn't really I on, didn't on have the fo- account no though I had nothing compared to what I've got now oh okay okay so I sat around and I watched loads of 70s uh, uh, films and uh, I just was sad for for a while and then what I realized was I like genuinely missed cooking food for people so like as a real tiny aside as someone who wants attention all the time that's me being real I, well I mean like I'm, to the quiet. I'm having conversations I'm like I'm fucking in my 30s now and I, I wish I'd realized this in my 20s but uh, c'est la vie I, all I want really is attention and, and, and more specifically I want validation I want yeah. people to tell me I'm doing something good for them and cooking is one of the quickest ways of doing that so 
I was like, right, mother, I can't fucking cook for people because my fucking shit's gone under. And like, I'm just sat in a flat and the rest of the world is not allowed to leave their flats. <laughs> so what am I supposed to do? I've got this black fucking box of wires. You know, so I, I, I swear to you, Steve, I literally just leaned it up against the fucking whatever in my kitchen. And I, pressed I the remember flag. these. I re- yes. And yeah, I yeah, said, yeah. I haven't got a restaurant. Like, I don't fucking know how to do anything. But what I can do, if you can't buy food from me, I'm going to tell you how you can do it at home. Yes. Right? So I'm like, okay, here's a ramen broth or here's a fucking fried chicken. The things that I love. And then to this day, I have no idea what happened in such a short amount of time. But like two months later, I've gone from 900 followers to 5,000 followers or whatever. And people are saying, and I love it still. And and you do have to cut me off because I've had a f- few beers. But, <laughs> you know, I still get now, like, people being like, right, I'm cooking my girlfriend a rump of lamb. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, please, and I will, all like, I don't care if you have 1,000, 4,000, or 900,000. Like, you should have enough time to answer someone's question like that. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and it sort of went from that. And then people were like, okay, right, so... I want to cook ribs, but I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, right. Well, it takes me 32 seconds to tell you how to cook ribs. Shit. So there was like a lot of behind the scenes. A, a lot, a lot. So I mean, all you always hear about lot. that like sort of one-to-one connection type shit where brands really come into their own. There was um, shit. The name escapes me, but it was like uh, the CEO of some Scandinavian airline wrote a book in the 90s called Moments of Truth, and it basically relates to how um, as a business. If you want to reduce what the core of who you are and as a business, what you represent, there are moments when you get to step up to the plate, so to speak, and actually connect with a customer and right. really, really seal the deal on what you are as a business. Those moments Absolutely. where it's like you're putting yourself out there as the food brand. I know, I know what the shit is with this, this, this. People come at you with, Jan as you Carl- said, Carlson. That's the one, Jan Carlson. I've got the book uh, in a corner somewhere over there. Um, and uh, yeah it was essentially when you have those moments when you have the opportunity essentially to connect one to one with a customer those are the most invaluable moments because that person then every time they cook that joint of meat they're going to say oh yeah holy mountain Harry hooked me up on that recipe dude and without sort of Saying the absolute obvious, we're talking about a period of time where everybody had to stay in and everybody <laughs> thus was on their phones. Yes. So if some fucking John Smith 93 messages me and says, how do you make an omelette? Who the fuck am I to not give him a minute and a half of my time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To we got, say, we got nothing but time. Just this do shit. this. Yeah. R- right, exactly. So, and that sort of happened and it just got great. And, 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 and and I'm still like that now. I still, every, like, I think every day I get between five and 15 DMs. That's fucking great. From people. But this is. But something... my, my, like, my MO is not to, like, get 9 million followers. No, yeah, yeah. At all. My MO is to. Make ends meet. <laughs> Absolutely. My MO is to make ends meet and to. Grow. Cook great food for people. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's nothing also, more important you know, to me. There's, there's the background shit of growing your shit as well. So. Um, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're absolutely it's, it's, right. But you're it's something you don't, right. want, you don't want to labour it, but it's always in the back of the mind. Dude, the day but, I fucking... Someone says, hey, man, like, uh, my girlfriend's vegan. I just don't want to fucking do it. Like, the day that I can't be asked to reply to him, like, fuck me. Yeah. Like, I'll just go and work in fucking the bank do you know what I mean like yeah. do you know what I mean people like are, we people have are reaching time. out to you people are choosing to well, speak with you we have time yeah, yeah, yeah. to just yes. connect with people yes absolutely. and like without sounding like a hippie as someone who is in the last six months given up hard drugs like all we can be is available for other people who might need us yeah that's all, like all we can be yeah do you know what I mean? No, that, that is some straight up like somebody that's lived a life type perspective. Everyone kind of has their own journey and it feels like you really do have those those moments where you realise the worth of those perspectives. 
it takes a lot. You have to go through a lot of shit to get there, it feels like. The worth of those perspectives. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, that was a, a, a really beautiful way. <laughs> no, I'm being real. That was a really no, beautiful I, I sentiment. Too. That's all it that is. was a beautiful sentiment. Yeah, that's a, a, you said it better than I could. Who is that hat by, by the way? It's great up north. It's great up north. This is... It's the it's Mark, my friend Mark who used to run Chimp. I saw you posted it like what about a month ago? Yeah. Um, but yeah. Well, it, it's good for me because I'm not from the north. Where are you from? <laughs> if not the north. Oh. <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm from Lincolnshire, which is just like a load of That's... white fucking stupid racist idiots and farms. It's I remember crazy. now. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry, the Liverpool thing threw me off. No, but I remember when I was in Brawlers and, and we got sent loads of stuff for uh, Don't Mess With Yorkshire. And I, yeah. and I even I wore it and it's great. And, yeah, uh, I, love and I love that. I love yeah, the brand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the brand. But having said that... I think, uh, here we go, represent. Oh, getting it. There was a point where I did honestly think, like, that's quite aggressive for someone who's not... I know, that. yeah, because you're going to go elsewhere and someone's going to fuck with you. Well, I, I, I was in Australia and some guy came up to me and was like, yeah, fucking nice one, mate. It, I'm yeah, from Leeds as well. It's sick in that respect. I would, yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah, hello. Yeah. No, it's sick <laughs> in that respect. But then also there's the aspect of if you're going out, like I remember I, I had the uh, the white uh, Don't Mess With The Yorkshire t-shirt and wearing mm. it in Portugal and just chose to not wear it out so nice because I thought... I, I, you're I, just I, attracting attention then, perhaps. Yeah, basically, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, don't fuck with me. Uh, do you know what? Some guy's going to have a drink and try to fuck with me. Right. So, I mean, I'm like really good at fighting. But having said that, <laughs> having brawlers. said that, you know, it's it just a silly you attract name. that kind of like, where are you from? Oh, I'm not from Leeds. Oh, well, you fucking, yeah. Exactly, yeah. But yeah. what I like about this brand is that it's sort of emblemic, emblemic of how I feel. But we got way off topic there. Um, what's the move? You move to England and you save up money and you borrow money and you finally put a down payment on a little kiosk in Leeds Market. That's what I'm thinking about. And all you want to do is cook and it's in your heart and you're a good fucking chef and you're what you and your wife and maybe your kids and okay, right, wonderful. We finally we've got this premises of sorts. In the in in the market and like I carry myself really good at cooking this and like let's fucking open and let's cook like we're open to the public and we're in Lee's Kirk Gay Market and let's just fucking feed the world because what I am doing is wonderful I'm really good at shawarma or I'm really good at fucking sashimi or I'm really good at fucking chicken wings who gives a shit and you're ready and you're willing to fucking go but what you can't do is get that PR is join that, that fucking gang yeah. because most people can't yeah yeah and what do those fucking guys do like in my experience of being someone who like goes back to what we were talking about earlier like I'm like I'm an edgy guy I'm like a punk rock guy <laughs> like I like to be in scenarios and situations that are a little off the beaten track I like to be in sort of gnarly scenarios you know yeah yeah and, and there's nothing in the world I love more than food. So I want to be in these situations where I'm like, whoa, okay. So I go to Lee's Market and I go to Sweet Saida. That's the one. That's what I was thinking of. And I walk past and the guy is like, hey, hey, mate, are you hungry? I'm like, actually, fucking yeah. I'm on my way to Eat Your Greens, aka the best rest restaurant, in my opinion, in Lee's at the moment. Um, I'm going to go to eat greens, but what you got? And he's like, well, um, I'm from Tunisia and we do Tunisian food. And it's Sweet Saida is actually named after my mother. And uh, I'd love to cook some food for you. I'm like, okay, well, okay, great. Like, let's look at the menu. Everything's fucking three pounds. Like, who's going to, what the, f and he put that food in front of me. And it absolutely just just like ratatouille i remember the first time i was in mexico city and i was with dinosaur pileup and we were and 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 mike and matt will li hopefully listen to this and, and smile we went to mexico city to to do a tour 
And Mike, the drummer from Dinosaur Pile Up, said, I bet you $10 that you won't eat some food from that, that lady on the corner. And I looked over and there was a lady who looked 76,000 years old. <laughs> and she had what, what, what is our equivalent of a Wilco's disposable barbecue. Sat cross-legged on the floor in Mexico City in the middle of this fucking nightmare. He said, I bet you $10 you won't go and eat that. Like, Fuck you, I'll take $10. $10. Fuck <laughs> yeah. you, I'll take $10. I mean, you know it's like me on tour. Especially on tour. Right. Jesus I mean, it's on tour. Christ. Right. I'm like, okay, the fuck you. I've done for a quid on tour. Right. So it's my, Mike's like, yeah, go and do that. I go over and I say, hello. Like, you know, she doesn't know what the fuck's going on. I'm just a stupid white English person, uh, person at this point. And she made me two times. Dude, I fucking... I sw- this is no bullshit. I love you. Like, we've <laughs> known each other for 10 years. Like, I'm being real with you. I remember it like it was yesterday. She yeah. gave me a plate shitty paper plate two tacos bit of paper underneath it and I fucking ate this food I swear to you my whole life has changed yeah. whole life like you can get this on the street like literally this is fucked this is amazing the flavors here and but also the story I'm in Mexico for the first time and there's an old woman she it's looks boring, like it's she's gonna die fuck, isn't it? dude yeah, 100% yeah, yeah. 100% yeah. this is amazing I didn't know food could do that and in my tiny fucking bullshit idiot white overprivileged piece of shit way <laughs> would love love somebody else to feel like that yeah so and basically, that, what's the move? And so, and there are places. There yeah. is a guy in the Lee's market right now who has fuck all, but but a business turning up to the market every slang day, slanging the finest food, and doing. Dude, he doesn't fucking know how to make a consomme. He doesn't know how to make chicken wings. He knows how to make traditional Tunisian food. Like his mother used to make him, he named the restaurant after his mother. And if you give him three pounds fifty tomorrow, he will make it for you. And I, there is no fucking piece of my being that will that that feels like this is an exaggeration. You bite into that thing, and for half a second, you're not in Leeds. Yeah. And that has to be worth fighting for. So basically, what's the move is the the move to shine a spotlight on these, I guess... Oh, my God! Under, under the radar. Some guy who owns a fucking coffee shop, who's got millions of pounds, who goes and fucking finds some fucking bullshit pub that they've got million pounds. Oh, let's just, like, open a fucking pasta restaurant and, like, spend millions of... Like, let's get millions of people to just eat this... Uh, that's great that's totally great but it's not real yeah like if you look for it there is some really really authentic amazing food that will honestly in in my opinion at least for one second transport you out of where you are and that's the reason to cook and that's the reason to eat you're going into season two now is it season two okay what's the move was born out of like this just like let's just tell some people about these great places that maybe are a bit off the beaten track and I think I honestly think I stand by the fact that every um, eatery that we've covered has either no Instagram or <laughs> an Instagram with 43 people in it yeah, yeah and it's a shame that Instagram is a benchmark of, of things but it, it is what it is it is what it is exactly yeah, yeah. It, it is what it is um and then I got approached by some producers and some like some guy from Munchies got in touch, which was oh, super nice. super humbling. Yeah, Su- super Jesus. And I can't talk totally a lot about that stuff, but there's a little bit more backing now and there's a little bit more sort of seriousness involved. Oh, and um, and the general consensus was that 
if you tell people that you can get on a two pound fifty train for three minutes, you can really be opened up to this unbelievable experience. And and dude, fuck me, that I oh, it makes me want to smash this fucking house up. <laughs> there are places ten minutes away from here that are that's everything that we think we want when we watch a munchies. Yeah. Fuck, that's delicious. Yeah, yeah. We go to Huddersfield. We go to Bradford. Like, uh, I can feel myself getting riled up. And I'm trying to calm <laughs> myself down. Dude, if someone says to me, like, oh, okay, like, the guys from this evening were like, hey, where's a good place to eat? And I told them to eat at Eat Your Greens because right now, Eat Your Greens is Serving out of crowd of favors is it just around the corner just around the oh they got their own spot now yeah yeah just oh, around the corner because they were out of crowd of favors yeah. for a while weren't they yeah 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 oh, got nice. their own spot now because they're also doing they're doing something with uh, the real junk food project coming up this next week oh really i think yeah, I've done eat, that. eat your greens they're doing a it's it's like a spread of events across Leeds loads of different high right, that sounds club about and, right yeah 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 but yeah good dudes yeah Fantastic, like hundred percent. Um, but whenever anyone says like, "Hey, I'm going to these," like, "Where's a good place to eat?" There are five places I could tell you. But what would be really fun and really interesting, and like, forgive me, but the way I've like the thing that always like I always lean back on this this thing when you sit around a table full of people friends family whatever like you want to have the best stories we're humans we, we gravitate towards yeah, that yeah. need right yeah. and so if, if, if I can tell like oh yeah just get on this train it's five minutes get off the train station cross the road go down this road and you will find food that is like worth telling that story do you yeah. know what I mean yeah, yeah not that there isn't anything like that in Leeds but I feel like it was sort of done in the first series. So the second series is like, get on a train, go to Bradford. You want a curry? You, you, oh, fuck it. No, you haven't, had yeah. a you haven't had a curry. Jesus you haven't, Christ, you, you got to go haven't Bradford. had a curry. Yeah. You literally yeah. haven't yeah. had a curry. Yeah. You was, haven't had a curry. I was so blessed when I first kind of came to Leeds and the, uh, the one in 12 club, obviously, I was back and forth across to Bradford like a motherfucker. And it we was, come from the same yeah, yeah, uh, DIY punk rock yeah, yeah, yeah. ethos, and it was like there was so many times when it was like after the one in twelve gig, you go to the you go to the whatever the curry house is, uh, the one with flavor at the moment. Yeah, and yeah, you get the fucking bangingest curry that you've ever fucking had. And it's, Dude, the first fucking fuck me, the first time I went to Bradford, and I remember, bless him, Marco, who owns Wonderbust. Um, who I'm lucky enough to call a friend was like go to Bradford go to this curry house and it, I, I, I went there and there was like six people in there and they literally all look like homeless people and like the fucking ceiling is falling off and there's wires coming down like prob probably live wires <laughs> falling down there's no, obviously there's no booze it's just like it, it, it's it's a fucking shitty yeah room. It's basically a dive bar of a curry house. And I went in. I was like, what the fuck? Are we, are we even got? Hang on, just like getting my phone. Like, we even got the right place. Sultans, and the, I hope there will be at least a hundred people going. Man knows. <laughs> Sultans. Okay. Only taxi drivers. And I fucking ate the curry. I had a few things because I'm a big boy and I, I order big when I when I eat out. I honestly couldn't believe it. I, I couldn't believe that in my 30-something years of being a professional chef at such a high level, I'd never had this, like, sensation. And it doesn't cost £115 for six courses in a <laughs> yeah. Michelin. yeah. You can fucking get on a train and it costs you six pounds. Yes. Like, 
I, I couldn't believe and it reminded me of like the ho whole fucking reason why I love this well, shit. Well, it's making food the event. It's like, it's not a case of just the functionality of, oh, we'll go there because it's the convenient restaurant spot. It's, right, we're going to actually make an effort here. And it's an adventure. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Tonight, And it is an adventure. Meal. Yeah, yeah, we're it is an adventure travel because to the it's meal. Because it's not fucking like silver service. It's not the things that one might associate with a high level dining experience for want of a better expression <laughs> are you going fucking there's, there's fucking no airs and graces there's, and the yeah, light's too yeah, yeah. bright and you're in fucking Bradford unbelievable and 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 without gushing too much about sultans in Bradford please if fucking anyone anyone listens to this and thinks that they like her there we go that's the it's like a the recommendation for the curry spot of yorkshire it's literally the best curry i've ever had in my life is it relatively close to the train station it's like fucking it's bradford it's like four pound taxi whatever yeah yeah, yeah, yeah 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 unbelievable um so to answer your question i'm like i did not realize so many people would get behind What's the move series one and I'm really I feel really lucky and really appreciative of people getting behind it and it still gets all these wild shares and, and people still get in touch that is insane to me. So for the second series it has to be just like that one next echelon Yes, not sure. Further out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we Who the fucking I'm not even gonna mention the name. Who the fucking thought that there was a family run family run homemade ice cream company in Huddersfield okay the most beautiful warming people you've ever you walk and they make and they're like oh please try do you want to try this I'm like we're we I can, <laughs> I can, I can so feel spot, myself getting the spotlight really, needs to be the spotlight needs to be thrown is what you're saying well we I, oh, oh sorry I, I the, the spotlight needs to be shone on these people because they're good people and they're making good food. But also, like, this desire to be part of something that we associate with only being out of our reach, which is watching Footless Delicious and watching Action Bronson and... Yeah, yeah. And Matty Matheson go to these... It is... They're, they're, they're mean, here. All, they're yeah. fucking... Hit, they're here. What's the, uh, the sushi film? Jiro Dreams oh, of Sushi. Dreams of Sushi. Yeah, oh, yeah, my yeah. And it's, God. So, yeah. So, it's like that is... The entire premise is that it is just this small, unassuming spot. You would not think that this is literally... It's in know, a subway or something, right? Yeah, if I remember know, it right was right in like a shopping centre. It was like just... Right. A, yeah, just a really anonymous, small spot. And... It's you wouldn't know to go there, and there are so many of those spots across Leeds. It's um, I mean, oh my god, yeah, absolutely! Yeah. How many people know that the Guardian two years ago said that the best sushi restaurant in England is on Meanwood Road? Where the fuck is that? Anamatsuri. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like it's expensive, and that's a whole other conversation. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's worth the money, though. Yeah. It's there. It's it's there. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Let's let's it's, go. Yes, let's yeah. just for one night only. Let's not go to Nando's. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. that, that's all my MO. Let's experience greatness. All of my MO is yeah, just like yeah, see yeah. past this shitty fucking decor, and like in some cases, especially with East Asian food, see through the shitty service. <laughs> And that, Jesus that's Christ. a whole other thing. I, like I, that's not my place. To... I love it. I, I it's it's almost like it's it's. Uh, I I don't even want to go see a dominatrix. Yeah, yeah. Just accept the fact that you're gonna get talked to like a piece of shit. Yeah, they're gonna just lean over you as they put the food down on the table, and it's. I, I don't give a fuck. It's uh, no, nice dude, it's all part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it is what it is. Which brings us to secret forest cookout. What the hell is this? Really simple. Uh, 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 yeah, so um, I'm really good friends with my friend, my friend Rudy, who works for um, Man Behind the Curtain, oh, which wow. is a, you yeah, know, obviously yeah. a very well-known restaurant. He's a good guy. And we used to live, we would have lived next door to each other if it wasn't for a patch of grass. <laughs> so I lived at the end of this little terrace and he lived at the beginning of this other little terrace. And in between, there was a patch of grass 
and we went for a walk um, one time. He's a really good friend of mine. I love him a lot. Shout out, Rudy. Um, and we were talking about like how cooking over fire differs to not cooking over fire, a load of boring bullshit. And um, anyway, long story short, he was part of, um, what's the way? So there was a sort of collective, collective of people who, who looked after this patch of grass. This is a, this is a patch Indians. of, right. Yeah. So there's a patch of grass between our houses and he ended up, ended up doing some sort of research and, and it's a council owned patch of gla- grass, sorry. And um, the point of it is that it, 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 it's trying to get people in the neighborhood to grow their own vegetables. Okay. That's the nature of, the, of it. Now, I don't want to disrespect anyone listening, but like it had just turned into young people getting stoned. Okay. Right? And that's all right. Yeah, no bad thing. That's all right. 100%. But there was this beautiful piece of of grass with a fire pit and everything. It was a beautiful, like, uh, vegetable patches that most people weren't using and blah, blah. And um, and we got in touch and we said, listen, we, you know, we want to cook some food and it's going to be a, a sort of... Uh, it's not going to be rowdy, like open ended invite to anyone it was just gonna be, it was gonna be 20 people 30 people 40 people it got it got way more popular the more we did it but um and we it was just our chance to cook food over Wait, fire can I just 20 sure. 30 i from the pictures i saw from what you put online it only ever looked like i would have said it was 10 15 so it really was just it was it 40, big. 40, yeah, yeah, 40, yeah. 40 people nice yeah 40 it, people it, it, that, al- that element with social really... distancing as well yeah, and we had to take that yeah, into consideration yeah, yeah. but no the, the the scale of it wasn't conveyed within the posts that you'd put out there so it's it's crazy to hear it got <laughs> to that size but it also well, interesting like... you should say that because like that's the uh that's what we all want when we go for dinner right yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We're it's attracted to places of... that are busy, but we also are attracted to places that make us feel like it's exactly, just yeah, yeah. You're our not, and our partner. You're not overwhelmed by the, right. Yeah, yeah. It was exactly that. So we just said, "Let's." Just, I mean, it really was just that simple. It was just like, okay, right. Well, you sent an email, and they said it's okay. What should we do? And I, I'm now even struggling to remember the first event we did. We did six. Wow. And they all sold out within half an hour or an hour. <laughs> because people, it was yeah, lockdown. Yeah. You know, people wanted yes, to do something. Absolutely, and they yes. wanted to do it. They wanted to do it safely. Yes, yeah, and, yeah. and, and, and uh, outdoors, it's perfect. Right, and they were. It's trusted because I'm a fantastic chef, and it was just good. You know, it was good for everyone. It, 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 we weren't trying to make fucking shitloads of money. It was just like it was an event. Right, you I rang my friend Liam um, from Tarbots, the only. The only fishmongers that you should be using uh, <laughs> in, in Leeds, and I said, "Look, I've, we're going to do this." And he said, "Right, cool. Well, you know, I'm behind." And he got behind it, which was fantastic. And we cooked mainly fish, okay, over fire, which, in my opinion, is one of the best sort of yeah, yeah, the most like you know, what's the you know. Uh, authentic it just has like a big effect on people oh okay yeah 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 i've never experienced that so i I couldn't speak to it dude it was the best it was the best and and then i'm like okay fuck we need booze obviously people need booze so um natty wine what the fuck is this thing oh my god so i i I, we've all i've always championed friends of ham i think that it's overlooked sometimes because it's a big indie but i actually don't think that that um I don't think that that dilutes the quality of service and no, drinks. No, Jesus, and massive it, It's a fantastic it's, place. It's a great... Fantastic every time I've been place. there, it's a fantastic experience. Oh, the, the, the fucking staff there are amazing. And the yeah. drinks and the food is amazing. Utterly top level. I couldn't agree more. And I, I, I'm, I'm lucky enough to have a friend, Matty Kingham, who was the sommelier they, there. And I rang him and I said, look, I'm thinking about doing this. Like, You're going to think I'm a fucking idiot. But like, <laughs> We're going to cook some fish over fire there's no electricity we're in a field we've sold 30 tickets please can you bring some wine and he was like yeah yeah that sounds great i'm gonna bring some natural wine and it's something i'm really passionate about and we were like 
like, okay, yeah, cool, like, bring a couple of bottles, but let's just figure out what we're doing. And he turns up and he's got an igloo and ice, and he is talking, he's going around all the customers, like, okay, so this is the terrar of the farm that the grapes were grow and he's a man, I, 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 I love, I love that man so much. He make. I think I know a lot about food and, and he makes me feel like an idiot, a child. And, and he, he so, so then all of a sudden he's like, right, okay, so the next one, we're going to match the food with the wine and we're going to do this thing. And, and like, yes, well, I'm, I'm, I couldn't be more proud of what, what we did. We did, as I said, maybe eight events yeah. over the summer. And, uh, and for me, um, a few people have got in contact in the last few weeks saying like, do you want to take this to a higher, maybe more, um, wow. festival type? No, not for me. No? I don't want it. But like a standard. It was a, it, for me, like, and it goes, it goes back to, I don't know, you know what I'm talking about. Just like, it was a time and a place. That you was get, then. Yes. Okay, cool. And it was born out of like, people not being able to go to restaurants. And it was born out of our passion. Also though, interestingly, some things just don't scale up. 100%. 100%. Passion sometimes doesn't scale up. Effort, you know, it's... I could not agree more. Yeah. I mean, again, a, a, a company got in touch recently, huge, huge company, saying, like, we, we want to take what you're doing to a bigger audience. To audience. And I was like, I, I, I literally said this on an email. I was like, I didn't invent open fire cooking in this. <laughs> Like it's not, it's not mine. It's yeah, you, whatever yeah, you yeah. want to. But like for me, I had six weeks of like beautiful experience and people, and like pe like you'd have a couple who were in their fifties and a couple who were in their twenties sat next to each other sharing what and like being fr and then like I'm addicted to Instagram. Like and then I'd see like their friends now and they're posting <laughs> yeah. on each other oh shit do you know what I mean and they're yeah. like oh my god yeah like and and like I feel so proud to have like created yeah, this yeah, yeah. little thing and exactly how people say like oh my god you did brawlers and then you just quit or other bands and other um you know musical ende endeavors and stuff where I just do something with all of my might and then one day I'm over it yeah because the legacy is better that way. Absolutely. For me. Yeah. And I'm not saying I'm right. Yeah. Like what like stand we're gonna go keep going without Ben? It wouldn't be the same. It wouldn't it wouldn't be the same. Dude, don't don't bring emotion into me. Jesus Dude, Christ. Dude, but that was my, that's that's my upbringing of hardcore. Like yeah, I was yeah, yeah. I was opening up for Stand yeah. in Grimsby for years. Yeah. In Stabs and Autumn and in in in, in Hardcore and like and I've seen it. And that and that's like hardcore punk rock. Like, still, do you know what I mean? Like, it still tells me how I'm supposed to do stuff. Yeah, sorry, just having a moment. No, no, yeah. good because it's good, like be in that moment. Yeah, Ben, Ben is, yeah, a hundred percent. We'll drink to that. He was a fucking good dude. Solid, amazing band. Fuck yeah, and and, and the way you do things and the way you conduct yourself in hardcore and in DIY and punk rock like still resonates As to I me said, now it will always carry over 100% like right. if it's not right then if it's diluted to any point it's not worth doing fuck Just it I can do something else right let's let's round this out with three top Eaton spots in Leeds E Greens Stutzy my restaurant that I'm opening next week We'll get to that in a second. Studsy, Italian place in Meanwood. Yeah, yeah there we go. So it's called, it's called Harrogate, and in Leeds City Centre now. But um, yeah, it probably moved around. Yeah, it's just yeah, it's like if you eat there. Oh, Studsies. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, they got the, the, the pig. The pig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Opposite oh, okay. Santiago's. And what the fuck? What you're opening a spot? A week on Saturday. A week on Saturday. Where are you located? Above Watermark. I have my own Love is a Diner from Hell, Bukowski reference. Yes. Yeah. Like modern American small plate dining food. Good gear. Before we get back into this, okay. quickly, Eat Greens, where are they based at the moment? Opposite the Leeds train station, bottom of Kirkgate, 
next to Wonder Outlaws Wars. Yacht Club. Oh, okay. Yes, cool. So, yeah, wow. You're opening a spot. Have you got a name going under Holy Mountain? Just Holy Mountain. Holy yeah. Mountain, above Watermark, mm-hmm. which takes me nicely into the next spot. Three top drinking spots in Leeds. Watermark's obviously going to be in there. Watermark has the best Guinness in Leeds. Friends Who's of Ham. There? The, um... Sam. Mm. Love that guy. Yeah. I don't know him, but I, I just <laughs> I love his energy. <laughs> That's my best friend. He's, He's the a best fucking guy. Dude, yeah. He's the yeah. Best it was guy. like. Because I've seen him obviously online for um, seeing what you've been doing the past year. I went in there recently and I felt like I knew him. It was that's creepy. The, that's a key to a good yeah, cruiser, yeah. I think. You know? Yeah. Um, to drink for me, um, if I want a cocktail, it's Watermark. If I want wine, it's Friends of Ham. I love wine. And if I want a pint, it's the Templar. Oh, okay. You know the place I mean. I know you're the place you mean. At the bottom of the arcade. Yeah, yeah, right next, to, next door to. Uh, That's what's my favorite straight up and down boozer. Tyre D. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Tyre D. Great up and down boozer. Yeah. I reckon we should wrap it up there. Here's to you, man. Thank you so much for having me. And you. I appreciate Harry, that a lot. Holy Mountain. Thanks for coming down. I really down. enjoyed chatting. Thank you. As a motherfucker. Let's peace out there. <laughs>